the sun is shining. Oh, you want to come back in? No. It's nice. It's not that cold. Oh, there she goes. Crazy girl, isn't she? She's a crazy girl. Are you crazy, Lily? This is like her happy roll. I think it's her happy roll. She doesn't do a happy dance. She does a happy roll. And that's what Lily... That's what um, Mr. Chi does. Oh, oh, oh. He never know. He never knows. He doesn't know quite what to make of it when she's let out. Because it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lily. Beautiful day. Not too cold. I think it's going to get up to 50 today and maybe even 53 tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, my yard. I love it actually, and especially I like my tree. The trees in winter are actually more aesthetic in a way than they are in the summer. Oh, pan slowly, slowly, slowly. <laughs> I like it better slow. Okay, today, what is today, Lily? What day is it? Oh, blackies. But see, they don't really want to go out. They like to just observe. Oops, sorry, the shadow here. That's uh. Shirley's standing up and Laverne is on the bottom. You don't want to go out, guys, do you? You're fine inside. I think they're fine inside. So, yeah. Um, what is today? I keep forgetting. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. And you'll see this. I might put this with the one, the book one, which is going up on Friday, I think. The Ovenex one. So that's going to be 11. So... You'll see this on Friday, the December 11 vlog, I think. And let me stop here. We've got enough footage of these two frolicking. And I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you're all doing well. Bye. Hey guys, we need to open some windows. I mean, I keep calling them windows. I mean, doors. In German, they call them little doors, Türchen. And I had figured out I, off camera where the, where the numbers are, because I do have a hard time seeing them. Okay, so this is seven. Oh wait, yeah, seven, eight, nine, because today is the ninth, correct? And um, yeah, you see the the Christmas market scene. You can get better at doing this on camera. No, <laughs> maybe a little bit. Another classic one. Is it classic? Classic. Yummy. I like them all. And it's repetitive, but it doesn't matter. Another white one. I really like the white ones. Weiss in German. Ferrero Küsschen. I'm supposed to... Some people... Uh, uh, Carolyn was saying she likes it when I speak German. I could do that all the time, but I won't. Don't worry. I will not do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. He's another American or, ang you know, non-German looking Christmas person and he is he's just i guess maybe people know that he's nicolaus you know nicholas who brings the chocolates on september uh sorry december 6th but he's not traditionally german i would argue i mean thomas nast jolly old saint nick and all that good stuff from the 19th century or not good stuff right? <gasps> oh this is the first time i've gotten one of these is one of the hazelnut ones. Rocher. Yeah, Ferreo Rocher. I think you can get these at Kroger, but you can't get the whole thing, <laughs> the whole shebang. So yeah, I got three new new ones, which I won't eat, which I will eat sparingly because I'm still trying to be somewhat good. The problem is that we have Strollen and we have Lefkoven, but as I said to Bill this morning, a lot less than in in past years, you know, I would have by now consumed a lot more. So we're, we're doing okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a little tough, but we're fine. We're fine. Hope you're all doing well, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hello. I come to you from my little reading corner. I am noticing how doing Vlogmas and having kind of fun with it is taking me away from reading a little bit. Um, this is, I'm talking to you on Wednesday, so this is still Wednesday, <laughs> but the next clip will be the book tour, 
I just wanted to come on and sort of preface it a little bit and just tell you what's going on because it's fun <laughs> and I had so I'm on Twitter a lot and I have quite a few followers there more than anywhere else but I had tweeted something kind of um, self-pitying about how no one ever tags me because it's kind of true and I know why it's because people lost track of me because I, I really kind of ditched the old channel I, I didn't do what smart people do which is just rename anyway it has to do with the Google connection to BookTube. I've talked about this before and it's boring anyway, but I don't, I didn't want to come off as completely like everyone hates me. No one ever tags me. And I, and, and it did come off that way a little bit, but tagging is so interesting. And then doing tags is so interesting because it can get kind of like, if you don't have good answers or you feel compelled to do it, but you don't really, I did, I remember doing one tag. Hannah has always been really nice about tagging me. Hannah from the wonderful China, Hannah's books. And she, it was, well, actually it was Roz's tag and it was about poetry and it was really hard for me to do because I had to go back and it took a lot out of me to do it. And then, and then, so then, and then you kind of get into this thing, well, not many people are watching this, you know, um, but probably because it was poetry and, and no one, not even, this is the previous iteration of the channel. And so it's sort of like, did it, was, was it, I, I hate to say it, but you kind of get this idea, was it worth the, the investment and the, the, the time that I put into making that and then no one kind of seems to be commenting on it um, and so what I'm doing now not much has changed but one thing I've changed I've, my mindset in terms of this whole channel YouTube stuff is that I do it kind of also always for me like accountability because it's fun and the secondary stuff of having wonderful people talk and interact which is great but to try and um, not get too attached to all that aspect of it, which is, I know is hard, but um, I think that's what will keep me going. And and so anyway, but that's just yeah, that's interesting. The whole and you know I and even buddy reads and stuff like that. I don't hardly ever do them because well, there's lots of reasons: introversion, not wanting to get pinned down for to to have um, to be accountable to other people in terms of what I read is is maybe something I don't really want that much um anyway but what I wanted to say is I keep watching because yes I obsessively rewatch the stuff that's going to go up on Blogmas and I keep, and I keep watching this little snippet you're going to see of the penguins and I was in a weird mood <laughs> you could probably tell um I wasn't I hadn't had any alcohol yet not that I had that much but I wasn't it was I was feeling irreverent and kind of like I don't know you, you'll be able to tell. And another thing is, you know, take a drink every time I say amazing. Because <laughs> I really overuse that word on that on that snippet. So, yeah, that's my little preface to this bookshelf tour. And then I think I don't think I'm going to add anything afterwards. So that'll be the vlog because it's already going to be long because you'll have had clips of the cats. You'll have clips of me opening windows. You have me talking to you right now. And now you're going to see the book thing. And that's plenty and I will talk to you very soon. And of course, as always, please comment on specifically with the book tour, like books that you like, hate. I'm really collecting all these comments that I'm getting on on what you're saying about the books you see. And that's a lot of fun. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. To the penguin shelf. And let's get right to it. First off, we have Chekhov's plays. And I don't remember if I've read any of them. I'm very familiar with some of the plots. Uh, but I don't know. I think I may have read some. But I would actually, that's a sort of one that, you know, was on its way up to be promoted to actual TBR, but we'll see. So Gawain and the Green Knight, I have never read. So this is probably a bill book, but I'm glad I have it because you never know. I might want to read it. Same goes for the actual Tristan, Gottfried von Strasbourg. Is it written in, well, I guess this is English, so it's all... See, I would read this. I mean, was what was it originally published in? German, I'm assuming? Some kind of 12th century, 13th century German? Translated by A.T. Hatto. Yeah, so that's obviously a bill book. And then we have Hedda Gabler. Oh yeah, I would like to read these too. I do like Ibsen. Pretty sure I read some, some like, the wild duck sounds really familiar. Yeah, I know. Pretty sure. And this is a big gap in my knowledge. I've never read Dante. 
and I should. Especially this one, especially Purgatory. That's probably the most fun one, right? But I don't know if I can handle it. Not right now. I have read some of the Montaigne essays, but not the whole book of them. Is there one called Friendship, right? On Friendship or something? Not on Liars. Oh, there's a lot. On Friendship, yeah. On Cannibals. Oh, I should read that for Fairy Tales. They talk a lot about Cannibals and Fairy Tale Claws. This one I have read and loved, Zola. I've read, and then it made me want to read, it made me read two other Zola. Well, yeah, two, because I read, well, maybe just one. One, and I have another one that I haven't read. And the second one was the first in his big, long uh, family cycle. And it was not as great as Geminade. Gemina, Gemina, I don't know. But this was really good. I like Zola. I liked him better than the Balzac that I've read, but I'm willing to give both, you know, more chances. Would be time for a reread of this, if anyone's interested. Flaubert would like to reread this one. And also Madame Bovary. You know, I've never read this one. I'm actually kind of interested in it. French literature. Diderot? Diderot? Practical joke? Okay, the joke got out of hand and resulted in one of the most remarkable novels of the 18th century. Hmm. Yes, we shall see. Yes, if you internally, I read this a long time ago when I studied this kind of stuff. It's all about Abraham and Isaac and what would you do in that situation? And he always uses a bunch of pseudonyms, which is interesting. And um, I don't know if I really understood everything about it, but irony. Oh, yeah, I know. He wrote a whole book about irony. So, I don't think I ever read The Prince, and I'm not that into it. Oh. I have read Three Tales. Did I read the last one? I read the parrot story, Simple Heart, and they're amazing. I highly recommend them. And I read uh, St. Julian. What's the third one? St. Julian, I have definitely read. You can feel it. Ooh, there's crap on there. And then what's the third one? Herod Her Herodias. No, I have not read that one. Oh, look. Cover glass, obscure things. Okay. Um, I, didn't, I didn't read her ideas. I should read it. Interesting. But I read the first two. They were great. Yes, I have read War and Peace, and it's amazing, and you should all read it. I read it a long time ago. I think it's great. Yes, I have read What May Seem You because I took the class, and I love the John so you can start your painting. I kind of had a poster of this painting in my room. It's got these huge vases, and there's a little girl. She's actually on the cover of What Maisie Knew. Oh no, this is What Maisie Knew, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, there's another book where you see the whole picture, I think. Or maybe you guys just remember it from the poster. Don't think I've read The Death of Ivan Iran Illich, and I would like to. So yeah, this is kind of stuff. I never remember which one is early and which one is late. I think this is an early work, and the other one's late. So yeah. And then this is kind of interesting. This is one I forgot I, I had. This is the writings of William Morris, and it does also have pictures of his famous designs. But I didn't really, don't really know what the writings are about. So yeah, Asa Briggs, a brilliant designer who wasted time dabbling in other subjects, foremost a poet. Full range and diversity of his interests. Interesting. Song of Roland. Mm, no, I have not read it. Oh, it has an introduction by Dorothy L. Sayers. That's cool. Anyway, so yes, yeah, quite a few haven't read. Sorry, guys. Same goes for Abela Eloise, although I've looked at, you know, I think I've, I mean, I know about them, you know, but I haven't read it cover to cover. Abela. So yeah, got that one. This is 
is hilarious because I didn't even know I had this copy of Crime and Punishment because I just finished listening to it as an audiobook. And that was preferable to me. I loved it. It was amazing. I really like the story of Raskolnikov and his crazy people that he meets. And I kind of said it's like Russian slacker in the 19th century, but with the backdrop of the murder, I guess. But he just kind of wanders around meeting people and they all just tell him about stuff. <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious. Yes, I mean, it's also very sad, but I just think it was surprisingly funny. <laughs> I just have a strange sense of humor, I know. <gasps> Amazing novel of the 19th century. One of its kind. Probably even better than Jane Eyre, even though we like, I like Jane Eyre. Or just in terms of narrative pull, Charlotte's probably more to my liking, but I recognize that this is the superior Bronte novel. Amazing. I love Oscar Wilde. And... I think I've taught this before. I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe. Another one I haven't read because I haven't read a lot of Dickens and I don't know if I want to. Do I want to? Mm, probably not great expectations. I'd, I'd be more into reading something like Bleak House or something. I don't know. We'll see. I have dipped into the writings of Benjamin Franklin and uh, I talk a bit, a bit about him. Well, not really. Just a little bit like the Protestant work ethic and sort of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and making your own. Like he's the one who made his little timetable. Some of just the timetable, I don't know what it is. Anyway. Yes, I have read Silas Mana. I need to reread it. I don't really remember it that well. He was an odd character. Long favorite among her novels. Oh, I just finished and I liked it better, but this is good. She's amazing. Uh, have not read Henry Fielding's. Have you? Tell me. Do you? Is he good? Um, he's 18th century, which is not really my forte. Hey, how about a book uh, of depressing but great stories about people who live in, in a fictional town in Ohio? I've taught these. I taught these once in a class many years ago before I had any idea I would end up in Ohio. <laughs> and they were good. I don't really remember them that well, but I remember they were good. Oh, here's the Mel on the Floss, which I really do want to reread. Oh, I'm going to put this on the other shelf. I'm glad I'm doing this. <laughs> it's like I don't even remember the books I have. Yeah, Maggie Tolliver. Yes, yes. What else? Tristan Sandy. Uh, I mean, it's hilarious. It's funny. It's used for a lot of stuff in theory. Yeah. You go right back in there. <laughs> the other Dantes. Oh, this is Inferno. That's the one I want to read. I don't want to read Purgatory. Who cares about Purgatory? I want to read Inferno. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and no one reads Paradise because it's boring. But maybe it's not. I, I'm just kidding, of course. I want to read them all, maybe. This one is falling apart. Inferno is falling apart, so yeah. Pride and Prejudice is amazing, but I don't really want to reread it. I don't know, I don't, for some reason, for me at least, I'm not a rereader anyway, and so when I reread Persuasion, I didn't get that much more out of it the second time. It's not like, oh yeah, I noticed so many new things. It's like once is almost enough. I've never read the earlier ones, and then the, the, or the, the, the pre and post Jane Austens, which they're all unfinished, I gather, since they can all fit in this one little volume. And, oh, my favorite, I know, controversial opinion, but this is my favorite Jane Austen. I like Fanny, and I kind of identify with her, the overlooked person. Uh, Emma is my least favorite Jane Austen novel, but also very good. And then Tess, the only Hardy that I have read. Which Hardys do I need to read? My sense is that they're really good, but they're all really depressing. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, that's the that's the penguin shelf. And sorry for length. And then we get into kind of the hardcovers. They're all together. And it's also by height. That's the only organizational principle. Hardcovers are here. And then we have the, the even shorter paperbacks. And then it just goes right on. Like that shelf up there, it's still height. 
the high one, the taller ones are at the top, and then the medium, and then the more hard covers here, and then hard covers, and then it goes into more soft covers. And then we get into sort of thematically differently grouped. This is the religion shelf. I've read very little of this shelf, to be honest. I can still show you the books, but I've read hardly any of them. This is the eclectic big bookshelf down here. And then we get into the German stuff, which I don't know if you're interested in all my German books. And then we have um, German, German shelf, German shelf, German shelf, with two big books at the end that didn't quite fit anywhere else. Um, Transcendentalism shelf might be interesting. There's also a lot here that I've only dipped into. Transcendentalism. And then theory shelf. Of course, I have a lot more books in my office at school, but this is the theory shelf, such as it were. And most of these I've dipped into, but I have not read cover to cover. Oops, that's the wrong shelf. This is the theory shelf. Look, it's got a book by Derrida, whatever, you know, the usual. And then down here we have eclectic self helpy type stuff. So yeah, overview of the shelves. I'll talk to you later. You're listening to our beautiful clock. <laughs> Bye.